Today is Remembrance Day. People across our nation and many in other nations too will pause today for a couple of minutes at 11am to remember those who have died in war. And I want to read you a couple of poems that were written by men who fought in what we was known as the Great War or the War to End All Wars. The war we now know as World War One. This is In Flanders Fields by John McRae. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields. And this is the Anthem for Doomed Youth by Wilfred Owen. What passing bells for those who die as cattle. Only the monstrous anger of the guns. Only the stuttering rifles rapid rattle. Can patter out their hasty orisons. No mockeries now for them. No prayers nor bells. Nor any voice of mourning save the choirs, the shrill demented choirs of wailing shells and bugles calling for them from sad shires. What candles may be held to speed them all, not in the hands of boys but in their eyes, shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes. The pallor of girls' brows shall be their pall. Their flowers, the tenderness of patient minds, and each slow dusk, a drawing down of blinds. If I am honest with you, I struggle a little with Remembrance Day, and indeed Remembrance Sunday. It seems to me that on this day we walk a tightrope. On the one hand, we wish to honour those who have died in war. And on the other, we risk the danger of turning war into something that we celebrate. There can be a tension on Remembrance Day in our nation between honouring those who fought for our own nation and remembering all those who died so needlessly. There is a tension between that romantic command in John McRae's poem in Flanders Fields to take up the fight on behalf of those who died and the futility of war which runs throughout all of Wilfred Owen's poems. After the war to end all wars, that phrase never again rang out across the world. And yet we know again the world went to war. And this, I think, is a large part of what Remembrance was supposed to be about, to make sure we did not repeat the mistakes of the past, not just to honour those who had gone before, but to make sure their sacrifice wasn't in vain, that the peace that they had earned would persist. And I guess as those two world wars fade in our memory, it would be easy for us in the UK to think that we're finally getting it right. War hasn't touched these shores for many a year. But the truth is our nation and our allies are still involved in wars, in battles. Our institutions, our banks still invest vast amounts of money in the arms trade, which fuels other nations in this world to fight one another and indeed um, civil wars too. We have still, in my lifetime, intervened in Africa, in the Near East. And whether you think these wars are just or not, the result is the same across the world. 
War results in death and destruction. In children left without parents, in families left without homes, in refugees who we then turn back from our borders as they seek safety. The best way, I think, to honour the sacrifice of those who have gone before is to once more raise the cry, never again. The best way to remember them is to do our best to build a lasting peace. Baptists have often historically been conscientious objectors. And whatever your position is on the necessity or otherwise of war, I do want to remind you of the image of the kingdom of God, which comes through the prophet Isaiah. In the last days, Isaiah 2 says, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of mountains. It will be exalted above the hills and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is what the kingdom of God looks like. This is what we as his people should be praying for. This is what we as his people should be working towards.